It's that time again, ladies and gentlemen. Thursday. Take a fucking big whiff of fresh air. Get those shoulders back. Get that posture up. Let's have a hell of a show. Lots talked about today. Lots to talk about. I think I might need my mic up a little bit, Jay. This feels like the beginning of a Grand Theft Auto mission. Goddamn good day to be alive. Goddamn good day to be alive right now, right here. Thank you very much, Gloria Tells. Episode 75 today. Um, if you guys want to help me out, go ahead and like, like and subscribe because it helps out. We're growing pretty quick and I'm enjoying it. Also, I got a new newsletter coming out every week. Every Thursday it drops, and it just gets emailed straight to you. My weekly gems, the things I, I, I read when I'm I, – the things that I pick out when I read, I put it in there, the things uh, that stick out to me in the pod. So check it out, newsletter, free. That's it. Uh, we were watching the new Pamela Anderson show yesterday, and uh, what a story she has. And hell of a rack. You know, back then on the shows, when when she was going on interviews on Jimmy Kimmel and all of this, everyone was asking about her tits. In this day and age, it wouldn't fly, would it? No. But she's a fucking good looking chick. Well, she said she was just naive because she grew up like on an island out by Vancouver. So she was just sheltered. And so she was just always very honest. So when people asked her if she had surgery, she would just say yes. So then it kind of opened that doorway for them to ask her stuff where before they wouldn't ask people that because they would deny it. Mm -hmm. And she was just always honest about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're here with uh, my beautiful girlfriend, Mariah, and everyone's favorite Christian, Sonoman. What's up? And then we're here with Ricky Schmitty and JX Soto. So we should have a hell of a show. But yeah, that Netflix show just came out. And yeah, Pamela's fucking hot. I mean, she's fucking good looking chick like wow well she's really pretty and like we all obviously know who she is but that whole her whole story happened like when we were born basically so we were little we didn't know anything that was going on so it's kind of cool to go back and actually see everything yeah for sure and uh there's been an egg shortage i don't know if anyone's noticed that but fucking eggs and it says why is there an egg shortage one of the major reasons for the shortage is an outbreak of the bird flu avian influenza which is very contagious and deadly virus while this outbreak occurred over a year ago according to the u.s department of agriculture it has affected more than 57 million birds in both commercial and backyard flocks this has resulted in the depopulation of over 44 million egg laying hens meaning fewer eggs are currently being produced but that's not the only reason for the shortage the los angeles times reports that some states have been ban sales of eggs from caged birds including california so if you've noticed all the cartons at your local supermarket are a labeled cage free that could be the reason while a cage free life is certainly better for animals unfortunately is also impacts supply um you guys notice that schmidt at sprouts yeah big time we've been dealing it for a long time and our, we don't get as much turkey as we usually do so people are always coming where's the turkey and then for the past like months now it's been with the eggs that scares me with those eggs. It scares me to even eat eggs. Yeah, yeah. But well, and the meat and all the sliced meat that we were getting with the turkeys is fucked up too. Well, the ones that we get are supposedly supposed to be good, but still at the same time. Hmm. Yeah. Well, hopefully you get that handled and eggs get back. We have a lady on our block that um, she has a little egg farm, and it's five dollars for a dozen of eggs straight from her backyard. So it's like eight bucks in fries right now. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay, I've also been kind of uh, looking into getting one of these PEMF machines, if you've never heard of them, Pulse Electro Magnetic Field, just little shockers, helps with injuries, helps with recovery and stuff, and I've been looking into it, so, and we've been looking into, into a high-end laser, 
high end laser therapy. There's lots of science behind it also. So I'm trying to debate in between the two, but they're both really expensive. But I asked Paul check what he thought of these things. And he said, Paul check, he's a holistic nutritionist, kind of almost like a guru, one of the smartest people I've ever met. And I'm lucky enough to be able to text him and talk to him. But Paul says, hi, I personally don't use such machines. There's no better health and performance plan than living four doctors and six foundation principles, coupled with massage therapy, saunas, cold plunge, sound stretching, joint mobilization, breathing, and honest spiritual development practices, uh, such as Tai Chi, Qigong, various forms of meditation. If those are in place, then any such machines or devices are supplementary, but will never replace the core practices. To me, such things are toys to play with, but I've seen many make the mistake of trying to use such devices as replacements for the real deal. And what you end up with is all too often are fit, sick people. Follow your soul and arrive whole, baby. Big hug to both of you and your amazing women. Paul's the man. But he has these courses, HLC, Holistic Lifestyle Coaching. He's given it to us. I've talked about it before, but... His six foundation principles he's talking about is thinking. So giving your time to yourself time to read and meditate and just do healthy things for your brain. And then breathing, learning how to breathe. And it's coming out now about Andrew Huberman talking about how important it is to nasal breathe and how much it can change your facial structure. It can change everything's about you when you're not nasal breathing. You heard a lot about that too, Mariah? Yeah, they have, um, it's called like the munchie movement and it's for little kids and adults can get them too, but they like look like little retainers and they just like chew on them for like 15 minutes a night, but it helps their facial development so they can't, because a lot of kids will mouth breathe at night and when they do that, it makes their face develop longer so they don't have like a good chin and then it causes a lot of problems when you're breathing through your mouth, it's not filtering like your nose filters before it gets into your lungs the hair in your nose i think maybe filters the breath so yeah the breathing important and then he talks about eating which is eating organic food eating not processed sprayed with pesticide shit that's just going to clog you up and make you feel like shit give you anxiety make you depressed and just not be good and then he talks about drinking and drinking a good quality water a high pH water, 9.5 pH is the water we drink, but a good quality water that's actually going to hydrate you because some people that drink shitty water, the water can actually dehydrate you and get a lot of issues from that. And then uh, he talks about sleeping, how important it is to just sleep eight, at least eight hours a night, sleep good eight hours a night. And then moving is the sixth one talks about moving how important it is to move your body and not just sit there like a slug all day whether it's stretching whether it's going on a walk just moving your body those six foundation principles he talks about if you get all those in line your life is probably going to be going in a decent direction yeah so that was nice to have paul to learn from i I, and i i'm uh message ben greenfield ben greenfield is a biohacker that i followed for like five six years we had him on a pod a long time ago but he's all about recovery and biohacking and i asked him and he said well both are diff operate on different principles so ideally you could have both pemf for the inflammation slash oxygen delivery and red light for the collagen elastin nitrous oxide like i have a juve panel set up next to a pulse centers pmf unit and it works amazing Anyways, if you guys ever pass through Spokane, you can feel free to drop in and try it. But that's the setup I recommend, bro. So he recommends it. But I think he was talking about a red light therapy and not the red laser, which is a whole different thing. Yes. Um, which is good. So we got some call-ins. We got some call-ins to do here. Um, we stole this from um, Christina, where, P. Christina P. Where Your Mom's At podcast. She talks about the biggest boner killers and the biggest vag dryers. And I think it's a, a beautiful segment she has that I think our listeners uh, would enjoy also. So thank you for that, Christina P. So we'll get to our messages here. Let's try this one first. You got to share with Sono. It's not connected. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. She unconnected, and I don't fucking know why. It says it's connected. Silver Fox. I know, god damn it. Yeah. It's on the thumbnail like this. How do you overcome, you know, a hard day? Like, 
when you when you fall into those bottom those low days, man, how do you how do you get back up, man? How do you motivate yourself? How do you how do you convince yourself to keep going, you know? Thanks. Uh, Joe Burns, that wasn't the question for the day, brother, but I appreciate your uh, input there. What do you do when you're not feeling good? I don't know. You have, you have two choices. You have two choices. You can sit there and be a pussy and let how you feel control your life. Or you can be like, no, I'm not a pussy. I'm going to get up and I'm going to do something healthy for myself. I don't give a fuck. Easier said than done or not. What do yeah. you think? Um, something that I've done is like if you're ever like late at night and you're kind of in your head thinking about shit, sometimes just going to sleep and restarting the day can actually yep. help big time. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Don't carry it to the next day. Uh, like some everybody has bad days and just don't carry that to the next day or get up and go for a walk or just something simple. Yeah, and just remind yourself there's people in way worse situations than you. There's people with no legs, there's people with no arms and no eyes. There's no people with no ears. And they're getting through life fine. And you're sitting there with all those things thinking, poor me. I don't feel, I feel like a bitch. I don't know. It's fucking annoying a little bit. Okay, we'll go to, we'll go to number uh, two here. Timbo! Sugar Show. This is a Red Hawk recap. Sugar Champ 2023. Signed to delivered. Biggest boner killer. Set it to you. got to have nice pearly whites. They got to be straight. They got it. They don't gotta be perfect. They Teeth gotta be straight, and they gotta be white. Peace out, boys. Love you all. So his biggest boner killer is teeth. Okay, I guess that's one of my biggest boner killers too. Is just a, a girl with bad breath, or a girl who's like just ate a bunch of food and they're wanting to make out, or it's just like it just grosses me the fuck out. Just like hot, gross breath is a big boner killer for me. Teeth. Not as much because you can have a pretty girl and she just keeps her mouth closed. <laughs> Is that fucked up? Uh, if girls have braces, though. That's all right. You don't like it. <laughs> well, they're working on their teeth. God damn it. Yeah, I know. But talk to me when they're off. Well, anymore, it's like, how come you don't do Invisalign? Because I think Invisalign yes. is just as cheap as real braces and it's way better. I think they're more expensive. Uh, are they? I don't know if they are. Well, they might not be now. Yeah, because I, I, when I went in to get my Invisalign, I asked them, I'm like, is wires better? And they're like, no, it's just like the same. And this is similar price too, which is interesting. <laughs> but bad teeth, I mean, that's not a big killer to me, but as long as the teeth are clean and you have good breath. If would you mind like, someone if they had dentures? Like, would you? Would you <laughs> like that girl Chris, this morning? Yeah, Christina P. posts on her TikTok some fucked up TikToks, and this lady had like... She looked like a meth head, no teeth. But then five seconds later, she put on dent dentures and makeup, and she looked hot as fuck. I'm like, <laughs> oh. So dentures, yeah, fuck it. Well, I think, like, teeth, yeah. If they're really messed up, and then, I don't know. Yeah, it depends what you're getting at here. If it's wanting to be maybe a partner that you have to look at every day, maybe you could pitch in and help get the teeth fixed. <laughs> yeah. And for that guy, if teeth are a problem, his better be fucking perfect. That's the thing, too, isn't yeah. it, Schmidt? If you want something in a person, you better have that dialed yeah. in. That's fucking right. Okay, here we go. We'll move on to number three. Thank you very much for that. Here we go. Hey, Schmidt. It's me, Candy. I'm the, I'm the transgender girl that you met out with in Vegas, remember? A <laughs> book. Um, so, yeah, I haven't heard from you in a while. You said you would fly me out to Vegas, and uh, I'm just proud of it yet. <laughs> so, anyway, um, what about you um, call me back so we can finish what we started out in Vegas? Ooh. Anyways, boy, I miss you. Damn. <laughs> Damn, I got a fan, dude. I need no, to no, fly no. her out. That was a transgender. She yeah. said that at the beginning. Dude, that's probably one of the fucking Jovens. I, that sounds like fucking... And she said you made out with her? That's, Which is you know okay. That sounds like you know who that sounds like. Sneak off that. No. <laughs> it's Dan. It's Dan from. Uh, well, the girl you the made out with. The girl you made out with. Did was there anything funky? Or was it Adam's apple or anything? No, that was. It, wasn't that Mikey music from Vegas? Because that wasn't Schmidt. That's okay. not what the call says. <laughs> so Candy, I'll have Schmidt hit you up. Yeah. Uh, message I'll fly Candy Instagram. out. <laughs> I'll see you soon, boo. So Mariah had an interesting question the other day. If you have a woman who is decides to turn into a trans man. So she was born a woman with a vagina. She decides to take testosterone and turn into a man. She starts getting a beard. She starts getting a little bit bulky in the shoulders and the neck. And she's still got a puss, but it's probably hairy. 
Would you rather fuck her or a sexy transgender girl where yeah, her face no hold on her face looks pretty her face is pretty she's a petite girl she just got a little dingling <laughs> what do you choose and you have to choose or or uh your whole family dies well then the one with the puss really yeah. beard gonna, beard and everything the dangling's losing me you know what i mean <laughs> because i'll just start pulling her by her beard while I'm hitting <laughs> yeah. like, you know what that's let's, fucked let's, up let's coming let's from a christian a fucked up <laughs> jesus christ well, okay. what would you what did you say don't change it <laughs> i was like well what if i bet bent the little girl over and i wouldn't see and it would oh, just be man. normal you guys i making out with someone with a beard is disgusting i would oh, never do it it was such a crazy question yeah it was that was a crazy question right put me God up against it. the a, a that cliff. was her that was her <laughs> her fucking brain okay we'll go we'll move on here after schmitty's little girlfriend and vegas that no one heard about well i'm known for flying the ladies out and treating them real nice mm -hmm, the lady boys here we go Hello, what's, up, sugar? what's up boys um biggest boner killer for me personally i'm 29 been with my wife now for 10 years Going back. Be fucking married for a year and a half but uh biggest boner killer for me is pornography no lie what huh i don't know why it's been so the gay, more but... uh you give into that urge the less i want to have actual sex with my wife which is kind of sad so this i try to so stay hard. away from that what? um but i'll tell you the biggest boner getter um that i found out because we've been together for a while is recently uh pussy pump the woman loves it makes everything better makes her joy better makes it feel better so boys if you haven't tried a pussy pump yet try it on your girl and i've seen sugar on the pod the other day talking about how guys are insecure about uh vibrators and stuff like that i even uh recently tried a penis sleeve you can get this and you put it on your pecker and it just makes you longer more girth here. my wife didn't like it but it was fun to try so that's my biggest boner killer and getter stuff the porn boys fucking have real sex peace boys smoke one up for me that, bye that i was gonna make a joke for them um, it's gone <laughs> i mean i i get that if, if if you just don't watch porn for a couple of days my attraction sexual attraction to you is just like way higher and i want to fuck you and it's just like but if you watch porn all the time like you, it definitely could kill your sex life and it's probably a problem with a lot of marriages yeah or like younger kids who grow up with it mm -hmm. and just get like addicted to it yeah and they're fucking yanking that little thing like three four times a day on reddit you can look at whatever want any type of girl you want you can fuck her in your mind when you watch the porn so i definitely see how that could be a problem what, what about you uh, our christian soldier over here um uh you do I, much porn yeah of course so you know you, porn hub when you're lonely yeah and just dry spouts i'm in the sahara desert right now with my love game so porn hub or xinxx.com wow that's the dirty <laughs> shit no that's the good <laughs> shit no 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 but he said penis sleeve aren't you very familiar with those as well <laughs> are they Shmi, yeah, I feel like everybody is. Shmi says he feels like everybody's. I've never heard of a. I don't know what that is. Well, I've been wearing one, babe. Tim's looking it up tonight. Well, no, maybe Shmi, if you're dirty talking to a girl on Snap and she's wanting to get a little gander, and you have your sleeve on, and you go, "Damn, that's such a flip side of the coin, though. No visuals, but all more crazy for the experience. Because there's people that watch. There's couples that watch porn together. Yeah, there is. I know. I'm mirror <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah but the penis sleeve i don't know how good that could feel for you like maybe it would pleasure your girl because you could hit her deeper and wider yeah. but i don't know how good that'd feel for you and then a pussy pump i've never really yeah. heard of a pussy pump are yeah, you guys into toys she just has her magic wand other than that not really you don't give anything a good try no <laughs> not really maybe you guys should well we have yeah i think the 30s is when that starts happening yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but a pussy pump you guys ever heard of that no never that's the one i haven't heard of a pussy I, is that I, what it is i think I've, I've seen it i've seen it maybe around uh like the home page of i think it's a plastic thing that goes over the pussy lips and you pump it and it makes it more plump but i, I don't know what it does for a girl but a good old pussy pump huh i don't know i've never heard of it <laughs> 
boss on that one. Maybe we should check it out, boys. Yeah. Maybe we should check it out. If you know it. about a f- asphyxiation, is that what it's called? Did what's, I say that what's wrong? That? Do you know about that? Where it's it's kind of how like David Carradine died, the guy from like Kill Bill. It's where you like you almost get choked out, and it apparently makes your nut and more intense. But then, I've heard of that. Yeah, I've seen, and I don't know. Is, is that just a random fetish from good people? But I've seen porns where the guys love to just be beaten up and like uh degraded degraded and just well, like that's like bdsm around. but where does that go see i can see sono being <laughs> no, in, in some shit like no. That. no they say that it's okay. either like no, yeah it's, not, it's not okay me. they're abused like when they're little so it comes from that or they're like very powerful people out in the world and they want someone else to be in power over them <laughs> there's some sick shit out there you know those people that like to be like treated like a baby like yeah, get, it's 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 just weird fetishes. There's just yeah, I think that'd be wild. any weirdest shit you can think of. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a group for it. Yeah, I like, can't wait to see you in ten years. Like Sona Man, love and having peanut butter Pete stay at your guys' house. <laughs> no, sugar's Dude, fucked you guys up know dog. What's crazy is we uh, went to Tim's and he took us out to the Sicilian <laughs> butcher, right? But hear me out. Is there this a lie, five Christian? Gallon jars of peanut butter bro <laughs> oh, no joke yeah. and every time you walk by eckert so can you start away. Will, you, will you swear big on the dogs. bible on that no i won't okay swear thank you very much we'll long move on. tongue big we'll, dogs we'll, we'll, move, we'll move on to the next one here <laughs> you guys are gross i know they're fucked aren't they Dude, these hey, Tim, I, I would have to say uh you know my biggest lady boner killer would have to be a motherfucker who cannot get up and do something about their circumstance and just sits there and complains about it all the time and how they feel like they are owed something in this world when really you need to be working for anything that you want. And another one would be if I come over and your house is a mess, I'm not getting in your sheets because I know you haven't washed them in a year <laughs> and I don't want to get a bacterial infection. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Oh uh, Yeah, thank you for that. Those were good ones. Those yeah. were good ones because, I mean, guys, when you're living as a bachelor, you really don't wash your sheets much, do you, boys? Once a week. Yeah, once a week. No, you don't. You I swear, swear to God. On my mom. <laughs> okay, I, I believe it. On my mommy. Okay. I do a lot, yeah. That's okay. good. That's, That's good. good. That is good. Yeah. And because I also have, the, me and Brendan have these pillow things because sometimes you sweat at night because it's we're in the fucking desert. And so it has like this real thing that like, Make sure your pillow doesn't get all wet. We wash. I wash that all the time too. Well, that's good because yeah. when Tim and Sean lived together uh-huh. in their apartment, I don't think Sean washed his sheets the whole year, and that's not a lie. Or clean his bathroom, and rarely brush his teeth. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you would wash your sheets when I would when I was coming over. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd like to have them fresh when you came over. Yeah, mm-hmm. and plus, me and Son, a win's a win. Me, me and Son are the guys like we're making jokes. We're cleaning our rooms and the bathrooms and shit before we got girls coming over. And then if they don't come over, we're like, a win's a win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and coming over with a dirty house, I've yeah. always made sure to clean up if I'm having a girl come over. Like, Which always is clean respectful, up. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I want them to be comfortable as hell. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you for that. That's uh, definitely a boner killer. Or no, but then she was talking about how guys feeling sorry for themselves. Guys feeling sorry for themselves and start just be bitching. Well, just who <laughs> wants to hang out with someone who's just like mopey, sitting or sitting around, not doing anything productive, just whining? Yeah, some people it's, some people aren't even aware that when they're with their with a their girlfriend or boyfriend or with friends that every the only thing they have in common is complaining about something some people are just it's such a habit for some people yeah which is fucking unhealthy habit being able to realize you're doing that and change that and be like no i'm not gonna when i talk to this person i'm not gonna just gossip because that's the only thing we have in common is gossip about people it's just not a healthy thing to do well i feel like when you kind of start to grow up or then you talk to people that you were friends with when you were younger like those were things you had in common with them and then you realize like oh we've kind of grown up or I've grown up and you haven't, or they've grown up more and I haven't, because mm-hmm. that's all you have in common still. Yeah, for sure. So, boys, don't don't be pussies, okay? All right, here we go. We'll move on to the next one. What's up, Sugar? Oh, uh, this shit. is Tyler from the Georgia Seminar, the Sugar Ankle Tat. Um, what is my biggest boner killer? Um, one time I had this girl over, and uh, we're watching movies. Things were about to get a little frisky. And she ended up saying that she had to use the bathroom. Okay, cool. So she uses the bathroom. I also had to go pee. 
So I go into the bathroom after her and, uh, yeah, it smells like complete dog shit. Um, <laughs> I go to go pee and there's skin marks inside my fucking toilet. <laughs> um, long story short, uh, it smells like complete shit. I'm pissing her skin marks off the toilet. Um, so I ended up telling her, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm feeling a little sick. I ended up going straight to bed. Um, never spoke to her since. Uh, she ended up leaving at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, cause I was not about to have her sleep inside of my bed with that shitty yet. Um, <laughs> and for the next question, what is something that my partner does? My lovely girlfriend, uh, she ends up, uh, she also likes to shit with the door open. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't mind it. She's honestly my best friend and all, but like, whew, sometimes she, uh, she makes that house smell like, uh, you know. Big old Ronnie. That one got me. That's disgusting. Uh, that was funny as fuck. It's <laughs> fucking ads, but I've never experienced that. Have you, Tim? No, and I'm trying to think of what I want to do. So it's a girl you want to smash for a long time. She's just cute and she's sexy, and then she just goes and just blows the toilet up right before you're supposed to fuck, and you're just like, your stomach turns a little bit, but then you're just debating it in your head. It depend probably depends how horny I was. <laughs> That's so gross. The fact that he's peeing the, the shit stains <laughs> off the toilet. That was funny though. Uh, yeah, but that's fucking. Yeah. Yeah. It would turn me off. Yeah, I'm thankful you don't do that, Ryan. It, but but if you did, I'd Why would I it, do that? Guys, if you did that, I'd communicate to you. There's a shower. But I think that's just like respect. Oh, you're saying. You're so there's a shower. Hey, baby, I get it. It was a it was a long night of chimichangas, you know. What yeah. I mean? oh, like, a tad too many five layers, beefy yeah, five layers. Dude, like, that is so gross. The shower up, baby, shower up. <laughs> yeah, shower up. Throw a little spritz in there because it's not feel smelling too hot. Maybe, <laughs> I, maybe you could just say that. And clean the fucking toilet. <laughs> but you feel bad for the girl too, because oh, imagine yeah. her how embarrassed she is. If she walks out and just gives you that puppy dog. <laughs> yeah, and it's like you, she just sucked down a couple beefy five layers. <laughs> and, and but if she comes out like not giving a yeah. fuck. Like she's hot. <laughs> I would I would point back at the back at the the, the the restroom and say there's matches. Fucking light a match. <laughs> God damn it. I'd have to go clear my head. <laughs> so yeah, that's a little fuck. Thank you for that, Jobin. Yeah. Jay, what about you? Would you mind that or would you dip? She's at my house or no? Yeah, she's she, at your house. She came at your house and she just laid a fucking thick one right Yeah, now. it'd be a turn off for sure. Would you Would you still pull through and smash? I'd be like, dude, there's a little scrubber. Go use it. <laughs> yeah, that's You so would not. Yeah, it depends. Uh, is it like the first link? Like first you link. Really her? And her gut's hurting. <laughs> I'll be like, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised she didn't just be like, I don't feel good. I'm going to go home. <laughs> like, yeah, I yeah, wouldn't yeah, have stayed yeah. there. Her. Is her tummy still bubbling after? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> She's ripping ass. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Um, I, I hung out with this girl in college, went over to her dorm, and we were just watching a movie, and I was obviously hoping to fuck her, but her stomach would just rumble. It was just like, <laughs> and the, I, I know she hears it, and I hear it too. I'm just like, yeah, let's go. And then it's just rumble again. <laughs> I'm like, she's going to shit herself. <laughs> but then she said something. She said, I'm so embarrassed about that because my stomach always rumbles. So Eat. We, we let that go. We let that go. Did I smash biscuits? No, I actually didn't. Have you ever had to poop like at a girl's house? Yeah. Yeah. Do, and I've do said, you I, real I, quick, like a quick one. Yeah. Thankfully, it's been in, in, in places where there's like an upper floor and a Oh, top okay. floor so you can sneak to a different one but fucking that's brutal isn't it i know you're trying to pound some biscuits you want to you want to perform and your gut just feels like you should shit yourself so it's okay if you go take a shit and fuck but not okay if she does yeah, that's that's, to go that is too. disgusting she didn't clean up that well, yeah, yeah, yeah if, that if was she's good. in the yeah. she went to the basement bathroom where i'm not around not in my room where there's a bathroom and it smells up the whole room oh you gotta hit the tack shit you shit flush instantly yeah you know, get in, out, in, out. She thought you were taking a pee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on before I puke. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, here we go. That one was good. Biggest boner killer has to be complaining or just like a poor attitude. Or uh, when she starts trying to say that 
Peter Yan won the decision based on my time. <laughs> like, <laughs> just because I'm on top of you doesn't mean I'm fucking you, but when you get that left hand right across the jaw, baby. Damn. Whoa. Go show. <laughs> yeah, I think they thought it was the uh, the Timbo Sugar Show because I put it on the Timbo Sugar Show story. But uh, yeah, a poor fucking attitude. I mean, I feel like people with that, and everyone's different, obviously. But it's like they've almost maybe never have gone through anything tough in their life. But because people who go through just tough shit in their life, they they seem to have a better perspective on life. That in previous years they maybe they weren't rich or they were very poor or something traumatic happened later in life. I guess sometimes. I guess sometimes they're a little bit more just thankful to be around. But people who complain all the time, it's like you've probably had nothing ever go wrong in your life. You're just complaining. Maybe, maybe not. What do you think about that? You guys ever been around with a girl or girlfriend that just complains a lot and just bitching about everything? Yeah, that or what about when you see someone keep making the same mistake? It's tough. What kind of mistake? Bad habits that are affecting their lives. And it's your partner? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you got to bring them to light and say, "Hey, I think I think doing these habits differently would improve our life overall. It it, it improve everything. Communicate that, and then if she's just not willing to change ever, be like, "I'm sorry. Maybe you're not the one for me because I want to go in a different direction, and you want to go down this kind of unhealthy direction. Maybe. Huh. What did you do when you had a girl that complained a lot? <laughs> well, I, I haven't actually been in a relationship with a girl that complained a, a lot. What about you, Sono Man? Yeah, my ex complained a bunch, and it was always like a Debbie Downer. But to be honest, in the time I was like so ha- much having fun with having sex with her, mm-hmm. that I'd be like, okay, just weather the storm. And we get a fuck here in a couple yeah, hours. Yeah, <laughs> that's what my mindset was. And the fucking was good. Oh, oh yes. Oh. It was. I, I still think fondly of it. So you just dealed with it. Yeah, dealed mm-hmm. with it. Until yeah. I got too much. And imagine being in that situation. You love the sex, and then you knock this girl up. And now you're tied to this girl for the rest of your life. Yeah. And it's like, oh, God, I think that's a lot of people's situation. Yeah. It's crazy to me how how many guys just risk it and bust in the puss. Vegas, I was acting up. <laughs> you I, like you see you seem to act up quite a bit. And it seems that was to be my a last more of time. a normal thing. That was my last time. No. Yes. Condoms mm-hmm. from now no, on. Because you told me after Vegas, that girl that came over, you accidentally did a little a little sperm in her vagina. It happens to the best of them, A. B, you learn from your mistakes. And now I'm good. I'm still undefeated. So now I you're don't have wear a rubber. Yes. All right. I think I you're not so. learning from your mistakes, he'll it learn. sounds like. He'll learn when he gets some when little ghetto a little ass of chick. When you have Elena running around. <laughs> oh, and that's the thing. With this new one that I'm working on that you know about, I got to be careful. <laughs> got to be careful. Yeah. But why do you even risk it? That just seems so uh, dumb. It's, no, it, thinking going into what, it, you plan. But oh, I, being raw dog? Yeah, that just seems stupid. When you drink, though, oh, it's, 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 so, it's so hard to explain to a girl the animalistic yes. feelings you have. But still, I've always been good at being like, if I knock this girl up, that fucking sucks. Like yeah. That puts you in a different position. Now it's not about you. Now it's about this this kid that you have to raise that's a big fucking thing so i'm like just pulling out and busting somewhere else but in the moment it's like you're buzzed up you're fucking horned up you're on a a three day no bust Uh, oh yeah stupid Mm -hmm. wow yeah thank god for plan b Mm -hmm. Uh, see (laughs) now you kill those little souls what does jesus have to say about that no it's it's plan b the day after you're good and the thing is, when you do something like that, that's clearly against the scriptures. No. Uh, sex before marriage, clearly against the st- scriptures. You don't even feel bad about it. I no, that's pretty forgivable in my head. You don't even feel bad about it. You're not even like, God damn it. That says a that clearly in these scriptures that I abide my life by that that is a sin. <laughs> and you just say, it's whatever. This. I wanted some pussy, but I'm Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> that's a pretty forgivable sin i feel and then last part i remember you saying yes i'm gonna up my faith i'm gonna work on growing my faith and, and start going to church how's the church been i'm looking for a church <laughs> <laughs> okay he goes to church online yeah yes yeah. everyone's favorite christian so no man okay here we go let's check out this one here what's up gentlemen 
shit. I gotta say, the biggest boner killer is either when a girl says, bruh, or when a girl is just always, you know, someone you're talking to, always in a down mood, always got some shit going on, everybody going through stuff, but man, she's always in a bad mood, never happy, never uppity, always complaining, this, my life, this, my life, all right, lady, come on now, I don't want to do that, I'm just trying to beat cheeks up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel, I feel <laughs> you there. I think a lot of girls, I mean, girls that are like that, they probably don't have something they're passionate about. They're probably maybe unhealthy, first of all. They probably scroll too much social media and there's nothing they're passionate about that they want to improve at and improve themselves to get better at. Well, I think it can be guys and girls. Yeah. And I think maybe that's how they relate and talk to their friends. So they're trying to relate and talk to you. Yeah. And it's unattractive. It's fucking annoying. Well, it's it's fine once in a while. It's like, well, yeah. Well, if you actually know the person, but if you're just like spewing all of your shit the first time you meet. Yeah, it's a big red flag. Do you try to, when, when your ex-girlfriend would just bitch the whole time, would you try to give her advice or would you just try to ignore her and move on? Or I would try to give advice, but then it would somehow turn out to have like an argument. You know, toxic people want to just cause toxic and stuff. So I'd always be like, just Blake, 20 minutes, you might, she might start sucking the D and it might just start Come on, going. ride it out, ride it out. And if she doesn't, I'll hit her. No, <laughs> fuck no. All right, bud. But I think... um like girls want to complain and like vent because that's what girls do when they get together. They want to vent. So you have someone to vent to and guys want to fix things. So they give solutions, but girls don't want to hear that solution. They just want to get off their chest. Not necessarily want to yeah. hear to fix it, but the guys just want to fix it and get it over with and shut up. And the girls just want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. See, I'm like that, Mariah, but I'm not like, I'll listen. And then sometimes the best thing when girls vent out is not saying anything. Yeah. And... That's how I, that's why I'm such a fucking sucker. <laughs> Hot chicks with lots of problems that I feel like I could just maybe help solve. See, but they don't Fuck. actually want to solve it. That's I know, the that's problem. the thing. They're, that is the biggest thing. They love that shit. Yeah, they, they don't want to fix it. They yeah. love a bad boy. They love being treated like shit. The good guys don't fucking win. Uh, Not all the time. I mean, you could, you could put that, you could put that definition on it or you could be like, well, I just haven't found her yet. That's true. That's true. Um, because those girls you don't want to date anyway. Yeah, I know, but that's just how I. But like, if they give you good pussy, yeah, three times it, a week. For me, that's uh, just going back to the question. Like that's not a, necessarily a turn off for me if a girl vents to me, because I've all, and plus I've always been told that I'm someone that is easy to talk to. Mm -hmm. So I, don't, that's, I think it depends when they do it. Like if they do it on your first date, I yeah. think that's a red flag. And maybe if she starts cry like heavily crying and not well, being even able just, to control herself, I'd be like. This is weird, you know, but if we're having like a genuine conversation, she's venting. I'm maybe on like the fifth date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, looks like uh, Prime, Logan Paul's thing signed with the UFC is the official drink of the UFC because um, before it was the what was that? What was the hydration drink that was, was the UFC armor? drinks? It was body armor. That's it. That's it. So they must have came in a negotiation. I'm curious what a contract like that looks like. Probably pretty sick. Those guys are on, like, dude, they're the, they're geniuses, marketing geniuses. Yeah, Hats they off really to are. Logan Paul and KSI. Well, and and Jake. Yeah, is Jake part of that crazy. too? Oh, well, part of his boxing and everything. Did you see what the guy said about him? How he's just one of the best uh, promoters boxing's ever seen, and I believe it. Dude, well, how? I mean, you have that kind of following, and he's so creative with his content and. He is. He's uh. a fucking good promoter. Everyone wants to see Jake fight. A lot of people want to see him win, and a lot of people want to see him lose. Everyone wants to see him. Uh. He's fucking smart. What do you think about Mike Perry being the backup in case something Jesus, happens? Jesus, dude. I hope that fight happens. I hope that fight happens because Mike Perry's a motherfucker, dude. He's going to take hard shots. He's going to come forward and pressure the whole time, and he's young. Anderson did that, but Anderson is older, and someone who's 50 years old is going to punch a lot a lot weaker than someone like mike perry how old is mike perry i wonder 32 like he's probably oh, yeah. in his prime yeah uh, so i hope that happens because yeah. there's a like, high chance tommy pulls out too like he has a history of it right yeah yeah and the, and the closer the fight gets the more the pressure builds up and the pressure that his family's putting on him yeah. he'd be like i just gotta punch this this bag the wrong way and i'm gonna break my hand and I'm out. So. But how cool, like, what a cool situation for Logan to get signed with Dana White. Dana White kind of hates Jake Paul. Logan's been talking about wanting to be in the UFC for so long. Dana's been on his pod. Like, how fucking cool is that? Yeah, I wonder what, 
I wonder what Jake thinks about that because Jake always talks shit about the UFC, how they don't pay their fighters, but now his brother's drink is with Dana. Oh. That'd be like if Sean came out with his, like, you know how you guys do the uh, really healthy edibles and shit? Yeah. Like low percentages. Like if Sean got that, had his own matched with the UFC, like the official one, like gum, official gummies for UFC or some shit. That'd be cool. Some crazy idea. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Um, how can Volkanovsky win? That is a question. How can Volkanovsky win against Islam? Knockout. Yeah, strike. I'm striking. An early knockout. An early knockout. He's got cardio, bro. I know he's got cardio, but the 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 question's going to be answered if he cannot stop Islam from taking him down. Yeah, it's going to be hard for him to win. He, yeah, but if he can also not have Islam submit him, which is going to be a hard fucking thing to do, every single round starts back on the feet, yeah. and he's got a, he's got a chance, and he's such a short stocky motherfucker who's good as fuck. It's going to be answered right away. I feel like in the first two three minutes. Islam's not going to risk it. I think he's going to feel how fast he is and how powerful he is, and he, Islam's going to shoot on him. And will Volk be able to stop it? Yeah. Well, with him, dude, being the rugby player and the heavyweight back in the day, and I'm sure he hits like a fucking truck. Oh, yeah. And him being so natural to be able to put on that muscle and weight. Mm-hmm. I mean, and dude, someone who's used to be, didn't they? He used to be almost 300, they said. Yeah, dude. And then you suck down that way. Every person that I've known trains like that like joe riggs was like that they hit so fucking hard their bones are just thicker just oh. everything's more powerful and you can tell volks like that i'm pumped for the fight god it would be Me sick too. if volk upset him yeah I, if islam wins i'm kind of like well i kind of expected it a little bit with the grappling because that's the way i see it happen but if alex wins i'm like holy fucking shit what a legend yeah i that would shake it up that would shake yeah. it up and make it sweet but it would also make sweet if islam won because then who's next for islam oh I always go back to thinking about when Brian Ortega almost had Alex. And if Brian Ortega can get up in that position, a position like that, mm-hmm. it's crazy how we got out of it. Yeah. You know, it's insane. But yeah, he, two different two different styles, though. That's what makes me nervous yeah. that Brian Ortega was able to put him on his back, but it was from that guillotine, obviously. But ah, fuck. I hope Bolt can do, get it done, dude. I hope. We'll see. Um, okay, what else in the MMA news here? Conor McGregor chickened out a long time ago. Charles Oliveira, other Brazilian stars take shots at the ex UFC champ. No one wants to see that, really. I mean, I'd watch Charles versus Conor. It'd be sick. We'd all watch it, probably. Can I be honest? Yeah. I'm not that excited for Conor to come back. I'm, you know who I'm excited about coming back, actually? Who? John Jones. Fuck yeah. I'm more excited about John Jones coming back than Conor. I could honestly give a fuck. About Connor coming back. Wouldn't you love to see him come back and get a win, though? Yeah. It'd be huge. It'd be, but he'd be entertaining. You yeah. can't say he's not entertaining. His interviews, the embeddeds, everything with him is not entertaining. Just content for us to watch. Dude, him versus Michael Chandler, that's a guy from my home state. I would want Chandler to whoop his ass. I would rather Tony. Like, give him a highlight knockout someone. Charles, I mean, Connor versus... Chandler, fuck, that's a sick fight. It's dude. such a fun fight, and it's but if Chandler gets so sloppy with his boxing, Connor might light him up. But Connor, how, how's Connor going to carry around all this new weight? Who knows? I just worry about Connor's counters with Michael Chandler because he's really good at countering punches and knocking people the fuck out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like you said, if he got too wild, but I, dude, what if he just storm rushed Connor and Connor didn't know what the fuck to do? It's definitely possible. Uh, Laura Sanko wants to leave a mark on UFC history, eventually call a pay-per-view. So she's going to be calling a fight. Did you guys see that? The Derek Lewis versus uh, Spivak or whatever. And she'll be the first woman in history to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That is pretty sick. We'll see how she does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, that'll be good. She does genuinely, like she said, she genuinely seems really excited for every fight that she commentates. And I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. When you guys got, when you're back there and it's just a job and you're another fight. That's why I love Joe so much, but. Even with Joe, not as much as back in the day, because after you've done it and seen it all for so long, how do you keep that same? It's got to take the special kind of fighters to really keep you in love with every. You got to really love the sport, dude. Well, it's just love and martial arts, and you sit yeah. down there and be like, okay, they're going to play a chess game, and it's of whooping each other's ass. So yeah. let's see who's. I, I'm very familiar with good boxing and Muay Thai and good jujitsu and scrambles on the ground and wrestling, and these guys are going to combat. So it doesn't really get boring if you love martial yeah. arts. That's why I think Lauren's going to be good for it because yeah. she genuinely seems like it. Yeah, I think so too. We saw her in Vegas, and she was very pretty. Yeah, she's pretty cute. Uh, Davison Figueredo undergoes surgery for broken orbital. 
and nose following loss. It's crazy because you watch that punch, and that punch was, I think it was his thumb like this. Ding. Boom. Like So that's legal. You can poke your thumb out like that and look to hit him in the eye. And you win that way, you win that way. That's what happened. Like That's pretty crazy, huh? And then Max Holloway, Arnold Allen announced. I'm scared for that. For Max? Yeah. Really? I, I feel like that. Like, didn't he? Doesn't he have like super crazy knockouts? Like fast? Arnold Allen's boxing is really good. Yeah, he's yeah, he's just an athletic guy yeah. from Canada, right? Yeah. He's done. He's. I'm pretty sure he's undefeated in the UFC right now. Yeah. Yeah, he's undefeated. Max Holloway has been through the wars right now, and he just keeps fighting the top every one, yeah, top guy every yeah, time. Yeah. And he's a legend. How, and it's he's a Hall of Fame, man. for sure, don't you? Yeah. Like, yeah. For sure. So, right now, my pick, I would go with Arnold Allen just yeah. because he's that guy who want, wants it, I think, a little more. I mean, yeah. You, you, uh. you get in the sport for so fucking long, so many train camps, so many weight cuts. The weight cuts are the fucking worst. It's like it's hard to even enjoy your life. You're so... You have to eat fucking bland food every meal. You got to eat less calories than you're burning, and it's just not that fun so it's got to add up and arnold you're probably right arnold is probably real hungry for it yeah we'll see we will see okay so this is uh from a, a newsletter i subscribe to i think it's called thinker t-h-i-n-k-r but this is an interesting one that popped up it's number four how can a leader become a great mentor by learning the five c's businesses want a leader at the helm who has the ability to inspire and motivate employees to do their best. This can be accomplished by adhering to the five C's of mentorship, confidence, credibility, competence, candor, and caring. The first of the five C's, confidence, is must have when it comes to teaching and guiding employees. Knowledge of the skills being taught to the workers will encourage trust and the necessary motivation for employees to improve their own skill set. Credibility is also required when it comes to mentoring. The combination of all aspects of someone's background contributes to their credibility it is an accumulation of life experience skills and schooling not just experience not just work experience competence is the ability to apply all of one's knowledge and skills to the task at hand if a mentor does not practice what they are teaching they lack competence as well as credibility i mean that's fucking true no one wants to learn learn from someone who just spews off a theory to them and they don't apply it Another one of the five C's is candor. Honesty is extremely valuable from a mentor. A mentor needs to be trusted and give candid feedback and not be afraid to openly express areas that they need to improve. That was important. That was something Robert Falls taught me. Even if it hurt your feelings a little bit, he's completely honest with you. You, you can't have a coach sit there and lie to you because then, then you're not going to trust them. A coach that sits there, maybe it'll hurt your feelings, but hey, hey, you fucking don't train enough or... Um, whatever it is, you're lacking in this area. You're not good at this area. Even if you think you are at a high level, you're not good at this area. This is what we need to work on. Being uh, honest is important, I think, yeah. for a mentor. Yeah, he's faster than you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <I> he <laughs> knew what I was talking about just because I do that all the fucking time. I don't know why. Right. <laughs> Too much brain damage. Yeah. The last of the five C's is caring. A successful mentor values employees and encourages their success. This type of leader will have the employee's best interest at heart and help them to grow in their careers by helping others. The mentor's benefits by contributing to their own sense of purpose. That's what I like about all my instructors. All my instructors at my gym and, and, the, and the cardio kickboxing, they all just love martial arts. They love learning it. They love growing their skills in it. And then now they're starting to love like giving it back to people and strengthen other people too. All the coaches I have here are really good about that like jakar and courtney and jx and johnny and joe all these guys are jj they're just into martial arts and they love it so it's well, i good. think they see you do that too and that you've done that to them mm -hmm. so they want to give it back yeah that's good that's fucking good but this is mm -hmm. good stuff here one c to be aware of is the callousness leaders and managers may possess this negative quality that directly affects everyone in the workplace workers will never find the motivation to do their best if the environment feels negative most workers end up leaving a workplace led by callous and uncaring manager as Palver explains most people people quit bosses not jobs you guys ever had a, sh a shitty boss oh yeah yeah in the military a bunch of them Shitty one with extremely bad breath. 
smell fucking five feet away. You're like, God. Ugh. Then you got to hear a bitch. Yeah. And then was that at the movie theater? Yeah. And She's, she was ahead. She was a little bit higher than you. Yeah. She was a, the assistant GM to my GM. And uh, she was a tad cunty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She got brought in the last like year and a half that I worked there because what the my buddy Sam had quit. And we were all trying to get that position, but the company brought her out from because her theater closed and brought her to our theater. Mm. Uh, it sucked. And she didn't like you either. She oh yeah, she didn't like anybody. She made a lot. It was a lot of chaos. A lot of chaos. Just type of person to make you have anxiety going into work. You know, breathing down your neck, making things harder than they shouldn't be. Yeah, you know? that's a, yeah. That always. I've never really had a manager. I did actually when I was landscaping. This manager would just be on me because I probably was half ass and shit, and he was just such a dickhead to me. And I'm like, dude, you shouldn't be able to talk to me that way because I can beat your ass right now <laughs> if I wanted to. I could make you a little, my bitch. Yeah. And he was still, but he he had the title that he was. I was like, oh, it fucking annoyed me. That's why I really wanted to train hard because I'm like, I don't want to work a job like that. Um, the first of the five C's was confidence is must have when it comes to teaching and guiding employees. That's, that's true too. You can tell when a coach is confident what they're teaching, they understand what they're teaching and they explain it really good, deep, deep in details in different ways. You can tell compared to a coach. It's like, yeah, well you could do it this way, I, but what do I know? I don't know. Just this, you can feel that when you're, yeah. when you're learning from someone that, so I think confidence is a uh, huge you you're so good, Tim, at making people feel comfortable, and you're really good at when to have fun and being serious and time to focus up, learn, and guidance. Like you're really like so natural at that. It's really cool to watch. Yeah, fuck. I'm, I'm glad I'm able to make that vibe to where it's like uh, we can still have fun, fuck around, but we're still gonna work hard and try yeah. to. The goal is to get good. Yeah. And every the vibes are all that. All the students know the vibe. Like okay, captain's captain's talking. Time to work. Yeah. Time to work. Yeah. It's fucking. It's sweet. It's like you still have fun, but they still respect you for when like it's time to get serious. Yeah, because sometimes like you'll see places where they have fun, but there's no respect. Mm -hmm. and it's too much fucking around. Yeah, or places where it's like there's just so much respect, and you feel like you can't act yourself. You just gotta like very traditional or strict. Uh, yeah, but here it's just like okay, just come ask me a question. It's not a, it's not a big deal. No, no one knows the the uh like the rules in martial arts or whatever yes. so just teach them well and i think it's good too to like you don't make people feel dumb for asking a question because like like you're really good at it or like judy who i ride with she's really good at it too like if someone's not getting it that way you guys take it upon yourself to be like okay well i'm not explaining it in a way they understand so then you go a different route to explain it and then they get it yeah and you can see that i mean sometimes i even feel myself when i teach something i explain it to him three times and then after the third time, I want to say, hey, are you hearing the, the noises coming out of my mouth? Is that getting across to you? I get frustrated too, but then I, th I think about that. I'm like, well, I'm just not explaining it good enough, obviously. But then sometimes there's people, it's like, they're not here right now. Their brain, <laughs> their brain is fucking somewhere else. They're not listening. And there are days like that too with yeah. people. But sometimes you just have to explain it a different way to make sense in their brain. Yeah, and Mariah's the best about it with the little kids. I'm like, she's a, so good with those kids. And even parents have said in here, like, they've, gotten become better parents because of the way she teaches those kids so you're really good at that too okay competence is the ability to apply all of one's knowledge and skills to the task at hand if a mentor does not practice what they are teaching oh yeah we already talked about that one it's like dude i've had nutritionists in the past or <laughs> or strength and conditioning people in the past that were fat i'm like wow you must really know your shit you are obese and sick well, even in school, like, I don't know, we had, like, our gym teacher or PE teacher. I don't know if your guys' school is the same. But still, like, they're, like, fat, out of shape. And it's like, why am I listening to you? And I'm like, you know, you're young. You're, like, third grade. And you're like, like you're fat and out of shape. Why are you making me do this? <laughs> I think there's people out there that might love the, love others more than they love themselves. I think it's easy to make someone else do it and push them. But it's hard to make yourself accountable. No one teaches uh -huh. you to do that be accountable for shit for yourself mm -hmm. it's easy to like spew it and tell other people to do it and make them do it but to make yourself do it is a whole nother thing yeah for sure for sure so i thought that was a good uh good little thing for people who maybe are in a position to where they're gonna be be a manager or they're a leader in some area where that can help that was really good okay 
Yeah, we're still in the talks about doing the live podcast, the Timbo Sugar Show in Chicago. We're supposed to talk with the guy this week, but we got to be prepared for that one because that one's going to be tough. Did you see uh, Sean bumping into Aljo and Rob? I did. Yeah, what'd you think? I, I'm like, I think, I'm like, I hate when he goes there without someone who can fight with him. That's what we were saying. We wish you would have been there with him. I always, I always, it always makes me nervous because you never know what kind of motherfuckers there are out there. Yeah. You got to have some, some people with you that will throw down with you. Yeah. I but, thought that was a little stent from them to try and spook our boy, but he, he was like, how much, the fact that he brought up the way, weight, yeah. that's funny <laughs> as fuck. Well, dude. that is something Tim would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was good. I wish he would have been like, called him out like, hey, uh, Henry, if Aljo can't make weight, here I am. Like something like that, dude. It would have been fucking I fire. Think, or the opposite. Yeah. Henry, you can't make weight. Aljo, here I am. Yeah, true. Yeah. It was um, a little bit awkward. It was awkward it was. because Mrab was Mrab's always talked shit on Shogun. He's always wanted yeah. to fight him and just kind of maybe jealous of his success. Who knows? But uh, yeah, he handled it good. Yeah. What, are you, what are you gonna do? You're in the UFC PI cafeteria. Yeah, we're gonna fight right now, or what the fuck's the point? Yeah, they're trying to be like, oh look, we got him spooked with the camera. It's like, if you're no, a little man. hood, like you can see why, like the Diaz brothers or some people who are just born in the hood. Yeah. Born in the hood to where you get disrespected, you fight. <laughs> but then there's people who's like, well, that are, can think about it rationally. But like, yeah, we're not getting paid for it. It's like, whatever. This is a show business. It was really nice seeing Sean size up, like seeing the size up with Aljo. Made me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Sean's got his big palms too. Cracks yeah, people. Like, He's going to have that reach so much. Oh, Yeah. I mean, well, no, I think Aljo's reach is long too. I think he's got really? long fucking arms. I just, that height, man, that height made me feel really confident with Sean. I'm excited. Yeah, nope. Hey, so part of me, though, I just don't believe Aljo's going to be there. I don't think Sean will be fighting Aljo for the belt. That's just what I think. Yeah, I'm so fucking curious. I'm so curious how him and Henry goes. If Henry can keep it in the center of the cage, I don't think Aljo can take him down. Maybe if Aljo caught one of his kicks. I don't In the open, I don't think Aljo could take down Henry. Against the fence is a different story. You get your hands locked around their butt, get your back under you, get your head up, you're finishing the takedown. I don't care if you're a D1 wrestler, like you can get taken down on the fence. That's a whole different game. So I think if Henry comes out and they know that and they keep it in the center of the, the octagon and it turns into a boxing match and Aljo's failing on his shots, then I think Henry could win. When did they fight? April. Is it official yet? I don't think it's official yeah, yet. Yeah, because then they were talking about the valentina fight a whole bunch of shit going on yeah so we'll see and i got another question what when are we going shooting mariah's dad is making us a couple custom ars he has a custom ar business he's making us a couple and he's coming in within i think a week or two and then we'll all go and uh shoot those ars he's not a bad shot you think you're a better shot than me tim probably we heard you were good uh, uh, the I rumor, found out I'm a John Wick. The rumor is you're good. I know. I've surprised myself. But maybe you're, maybe you're just good with that gun. Is that possible? We, no, we sh we shot. There was three of them. We shot all three. What kind of guns you guys it shoot? Was a Glock 19, and then like a Glock 17, and then another Glock 19 with just a different variation. But he's this this kid's a natural. This kid. What I'm if I'm telling you, I did archery as a kid, dude. What if it's a gun that's smacking your shoulder a little bit? I'm a I'm a Titan. Are you? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I could outshoot you in archery. Uh, that would be so much fun to do as a video, dude. Oh we my could God. do it in my house. I have two bows. They, and we could that'd shoot be so fun. We have the hay bells. Make a little vlog on it. Let's do it. We can do it. Let's All go. Right. We'll do it one weekend. I wouldn't bet against it. Was that the first time you went shooting? Archery? With a gun, yeah. Really? First time shooting with a gun. <laughs> and then I was letting it go more. I was like, pop, pop. The vlog's going to come out. And they, were just, they just kept going. And then Sean's like, well, maybe it's the gun. Maybe it's the gun. He gets it. First shot, he did good. It's like, oh, fuck, it is the gun. And then the next one, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It's was like, pretty fun, huh? Oh, it, yeah, it changed me. But then every time the guns went off, my body just, oh, yeah. I couldn't control it. It just kept jerking. We'll go out, like, in the desert so we won't be, like, in the range with all the other people. Oh, that Because it's it, way better because it's so loud when other people are shooting next to you. Yeah. The guy next to us was just letting it fly at a certain point to where it was like, bro, can we get a second to, like, focus in here? Damn. damn and it was damn. really cool seeing Sean. I love it. He's seeing good. that motherfucker out of his comfort zone. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Right. This big badass fighter with his arms and limbs, like, give him a real gun. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, dude. At the end, we had him go sideways. <laughs> sideways fire. Yeah. I always go sideways. Fire. So, uh, after this, it's uh, Wednesday right now, so we're going to go maybe get some barbecue at this place called Eric's Family Barbecue. It's pretty close to the gym. Really good quality smoked meat. Tonight, gi jiu-jitsu and no gi jiu-jitsu. Um, I think next weekend I have a bunch of students competing. February 11th at the AZBJJ League here in Phoenix. February 18th, we're going to Corey and Cheeto fight. That one's coming That's up. Sick. Fuck yeah. And then the next weekend after that, I got a couple of my amateur guys fighting. So we got a busy couple weekends. Uh, looking forward to this weekend, though. Hang out with the boys, watch the fights. Yeah. How's, how's it been with a fourth roommate? It's been really nice, actually. Brock, yeah, Brock's cool as hell. Yeah, Brock. I like Brock. Yeah, He really likes you. He's funny. You guys are building a bromance, I he's, think. He's funny. He laughs at my jokes. So. <laughs> so, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, if you enjoy the pod, please hit that subscribe button. It helps out a lot. And if not, uh, patreon.com slash Red Hawk Academy, there's years of content up there. Cooking vids, different vlogs of my day. Um, recently, I had a bunch of the guys that are on Patreon. I broke down some of their fights. I'm going to break down the rest um, next week. But content going up every week if you really want to support. If not, no problem. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks, Mariah. Love you. Schmitty. Thanks for Sano. having us on, Cap. Love you. Love you, Jay. <laughs> All right, love y'all. Bye-bye.